Obviously you want to turn power off to your fixture before you start working on it if it does happen to be installed. Alright guys, another quick how-to video for you today. As you can see, I've got three light fixtures on the table here and these are for my shop lights and or uh, I'm putting in a hydroponic system so uh, get ready to see some, a lot of trial and error on that as we go along. Certainly no expert on gardening. I have a brown thumb, but I got four of these light fixtures for $2 a piece at the thrift store. And these are the old T12 40 watt fluorescents. In the past, I have um, retrofitted fluorescent fixtures in a large facility, uh, two LED bulbs, um, with what is known as a ballast bypass bulb. Now there are bulbs that you can get for uh, fluorescent fixtures that will work with the ballast and you just take the bulb, the old, the old fluorescent bulb out, put the LED bulb in and, and you're good. But there's some power loss in that ballast. Since I'm totally off grid, I, I want to eliminate as much power loss as I can, obviously. Uh, so because I'm running completely off my solar, my wind generator, and uh, my battery banks. These are going to go in the, in the hydroponics. Uh, these lights will be running 12 to 16 hours a day. So they'll be running off my battery banks. I want them as uh, efficient as I could possibly get them. What I ended up getting is these Halco Pro LED. They can replace either T8 or 12, 5000 K, so, so close to actual sunlight color. 14 watts, 1800 lumens, hopefully that's enough uh, when I've got four of these in my little grow room, but we'll see. It's got a wiring diagram there, and on the side of the wiring diagram is on. These are both the neutral leg, and then on the opposite side where the sticker is, these are both the hot leg. So you've got 120 volt split phase AC and it's really simple to retrofit these. So I'm going to walk you through how I do this and uh, maybe you can do it yourself. So you want to get rid of the old glass balls. Sometimes these things are really stuck in here. So make sure you don't shatter those bulbs and pull the cover of the fixture. Now inside this light, you've got your neutral ends of the bulbs, depending on what type. You may have a one, two, three, or four lamp fixture. I don't think I've seen more than four lamp fixtures, but um, so you've got your neutral side. You've got your line in neutral, hot, black and white wires coming in um, and then you've got an output one thing of note these ballasts when they go bad they start to leak and somewhere on the ballast is supposed to be a sticker like this and somewhere on this sticker this label it should say no PCBs but if it doesn't, just keep in mind that PCBs are cancer-causing agents and uh, you might want to wear neoprene gloves and dispose of this properly. Don't throw it down in your drinking water well if it's got PCBs in it. I wouldn't do that with anything, but <laughs> either way, if they have PCBs or not, don't throw it down in the well. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of this ballast. And since I have no further need for this, I'm just going to cut these leads off as short as possible. I use these nippers. You're going to need something to cut the wires with, something to strip the wires with, something to get the ballast out with. So in this case, I'm using 11 and one um, screwdriver and this particular ballast is held in with one single quarter inch drive 
um, screw and then it's got a little cleat on the other end that just slides into and secures it. Most of them are kind of that way. All right, so now I've got my wires cut off of the ballast. And that comes out that easily. Now on this particular fixture, it's got these end caps on, on it. There's a lot of different types of fixtures. Uh, so you're, if, you, if you intend to do this, your fixture might be a little bit different, but the point here is to get these tombstones out. And on this one, 15 minutes later, this one is obviously going to Later. There you go. All right. Now on this line side of your fixture, both of these lamps are going to be your line side when you put the new bulbs in. And one trick with these with these stab in type wire connections is that you can twist the wire while pulling gently out on it and most of the time it will come out without damaging the tombstone so you can see how i'm twisting that and out it comes you can do that with wagos and oh yeah you can milk anything with nipples receptacles Anything that has a stab in thing like that, and a lot of time. I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? A lot of time you can get it out without hurting anything. So, on this side, I'm going to use the red. I could have used the blue. As long as you remember which one is your hot leg, it really doesn't matter. But on this side, I'm just going to make a loop. I'm going to cut it off, strip it back, and stab it back into any of these, any of these four points in here. As long as it makes a good connection, it doesn't matter because you're either one of these connectors is going to provide energy to your bulb or your lamp. Some of the other ones of these that I've done, both the positive, both the hot and the neutral were on the, were on the same side of the bulb. Um, and I didn't like those as much. Those particular bulbs were for, they could be used on 277, up to 277 volts. Um, if you have a hot and a neutral on the same end of the bulb, if you don't turn it the right way, you've got, you've got the polarity reversed. I think that matters. I never wanted to, uh, it, when I was working with 277 volts, I never wanted to find out if I put the bulb in wrong. So we ended up having to label each side of these bulbs, hot, neutral, hot, neutral, and then make sure these were all wired properly. But with these bulbs, you don't have to do that. So all we need is all we need is one hot, and instead of trying to pry this end cap off here, I am going to just cut it and put a little wire net on it. So these are already connected together because that was the neutral side of the fixture. So I just cut that off. A little orange. Orange wire nut on there, you don't have to strip or anything. All you're doing is protecting this from having some kind of a short circuit. Bend it over here and get it out of the way. And the wiring on this lamp is done. It's that easy to do a ballast bypass. Especially when you have it on a table. It may not be quite as easy if you're working on the ceiling, but all the other ones I've done, I did on, on a ladder and it wasn't terrible. So now it's just a matter of 
putting that cap back on, putting the cover plate on, and installing a new new bulb. Now remember these two were my hot side. This is the neutral side. One last thing about putting these bulbs in, when you put a fluorescent bulb in, obviously you, you put it in the fixture and then you turn the bulb 90 degrees. So we've got our hot side here, we've got our neutral side here, and then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and make the sticker to the fixture because this just got a strip of LEDs that are shining this direction. So if you don't put the bulb in the right way, it will work, but it will be shining the light up uh, towards the fixture, which maybe you want that. If you, if you want to do some uh, indirect lighting, mood lighting, it might be nice, but I want these things to make light to grow my tomatoes. So this is the way um, you want to do that. Again, put your bulb in, turn it 90 degrees, so it clicks. Check both bulbs. Again, I have previously determined that my red is my hot, my neutral. Of course, you would just attach the ground. There's a ground screw in there, but this is temporary. I'm not leaving this port on this. So now, for, for the moment of truth, Will I let all the uh, magical pixies out? No. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Easy as pie.